Thank you. Thank, thanks a lot, everyone, for um, um, coming today. So um, this presentation is based on a World Cup event that we held at Minute University on the 10th of November as part of the National Forums um, VOET and L Week. Um, myself, um, Morag, Susan, and Aneta were all involved in organising it, so um, they've they've graciously allowed me to speak on our behalf. So. Um, I suppose in this presentation, we're going to discuss the opportunities and challenges of digital teaching and learning as identified by Minute University's teaching staff. Um, the data that we gathered is based on a, a very short survey done prior to the event and then responses from the audience um, gathered during the event. Um, and I suppose the aim of the seminar was to kind of explore and reflect upon the experiences of online emergency um, teaching and um, it was based on the, I suppose, a simple premise that those involved in teaching and learning academic professional support library staff and others are best placed to drive innovation in the delivery of digital teaching and learning and um, the participants were drawn together to reflect on the magnitude of of the teaching and learning transformation that the pandemic has brought about and how we might harness the best of these changes um, moving forward um, so to the facilitate this discussion um, the seminar was run using a World Cafe uh, methodology. Um, World Cafe is, uh, is a very simple method for holding large group conversations that involves dividing the attendees into several small physical, or in the case of, of this session, um, virtual tables. The host then introduces the purpose of the event um, and a discussion questions, and then leaves the tables for 20 to 30 minutes to discuss the question, um, during which time notes are kept as the central points of discussion until the session ends, at which point the tables feed back to the rest of the group and the host. Um, and then this um, process can be repeated with new questions. Um, and this in turn then allows for knowledge exchange both within the cross tables and also the identification of teams kind of emerging from these discussions. Um, thus, the World Cup methodologies ensures that all individuals can contribute to the discourse while also ensuring that this knowledge can be harvested by the host. So for the event that we ran, we had two simple questions. The first of which was, what are the dilemmas and opportunities triggered by your experience of remote teaching? And secondly, what seeds might we plant here today um, that could make the most of um, difference to the future of digital pedagogies at Minute? So looking at that um, re and reflecting on their experience of the period of emergency online teaching and learning, the participants readily acknowledged its impact on understanding and awareness of the potential of digital technologies um, and some common themes emerged um, in this um, section of the discussion. And these were about predominantly about the potential of digital technologies to increase flexibility and accessibility um, allowing the university to attract students traditionally un unable to attend widen audiences to not only enhance enrollment but also broaden engagement with the public and other stakeholders and um, as an institution with a high number of commuters it was also recognized that digital technologies can overcome some of the barriers involved with um, commuting and, and the geographic distance between home and um, the university um, and I suppose it was noted by um, several that the uptake in um, virtual consultations in comparison to the traditional physical ones is one sign of the affordances that these technologies allow. Um, another important benefit of digital technologies is increased opportunities to bring various expertise into the classroom and um, making it easier for guest academics and others to engage with students. And this extended beyond Ireland and beyond the module offering collaboration between programs and, and modules, um, both within Minute and, and with other institutions. Um, so um, some final but key points of discussion were the role of digital technologies in enhanced teaching. And many felt that the use of blended and flipped classrooms was appreciated as adding something um, new to the pedagogical um, arsenal of the of the teaching staff. However, while online teaching was generally considered useful for teaching skills, there was some issues um, noted about the its use in the transmission of disciplinary knowledge. Um, a significant portion of the part participants uh, commented on the potential of this type of teaching to enhance digital skills and um, particularly given the present focus on the role in the workplace and um, thus the discussion could have reflected um, the benefits and visions by many including the national forums focus on building digital capacity um, and i suppose despite the strong sense that digital technologies offered many affordances and, and, and a general very positive attitude to their use the participants also addressed a number of existing limitations that emerged during this uh, emergency period of online teaching and learning and um, so some of the the, the challenges and um, 
as perhaps has already been noted by the National Forum's uh, index survey in 2020, um, the attendees kind of noticed significant concern with access to and the difficulties with computers and um, broadband for students. Um, participants know that even with the laptop loan scheme, inequalities were prevalent. And these consisted not only of a lack of um, access to appropriate computers and poor internet, um, in many cases due to using mobile phones, but also the physical surroundings that students found themselves in. In particular, cramped accommodation interfered with students' abilities to engage with and participate in class. Um, there was also a strong um, impression that the lack of face-to-face -face teaching and support um, was a strong hindrance to access students um, and this kind of alliance with a recent survey from AHEAD, uh, Learning From Home, the 2021 survey, which has indicated kind of a, an extreme um, range of, of responses or outcomes from, from the shift to online learning. Um, and, and the group felt that a, a better understanding of the requirements of, of, of these students was uh, essential for successful online and blended learning as we move out of the pandemic. Um, then coming on from that, the, the full, fully online mode of teaching, in particular, raised concerns about engagement. And um, while a strong argument has been progressed for the use of asynchronous teaching resources to increase engagement, many felt that this was not the case. Um, added to this, student to student, student to staff interaction was impacted by online teaching with difficulties noticed in the use of breakout rooms to encourage this. And particularly the, the, the need, as, as some said, for moving from a lecturing mode to facilitation mode um, and raised issues around um, time pressures. So having looked at the challenges, we then asked the group to kind of um, think about the, how we meet these challenges. So one of the, the central things um, that, that raised fr from this was um, training. So um, staff noted that they needed enhanced opportunities um, for training, um, which extend beyond purely kind of learning about new technologies and um, to the pedagogies behind their use. Uh, and one minute offers training in specific digital technologies, um, a 10 credit CPD course in digital pedagogy. And this is also part of a postgraduate diploma in higher education. Um, the general consensus was that, you know, we need to find time um, not only to, to engage with this material, but also to implement what has been, been learned. And that, that's a significant um, constraint that was noted from the attendees. Uh, a more pressing um, uh, matter was the emergence of um, student skills, that students um, weren't equipped with the skills to properly engage with online learning. And um, I think there's a, there's a strong um, kind of need for a kind of um, strong uh, curriculum deployment to ensure that these skills are learned at an appropriate time um, and developed over the course of an academic program to ensure that students not only have the appropriate skills for academic studies, but also um, the workplace. And um, you know, it was felt that you know these these move past beyond purely digital skills, but to a, a, an understanding of course requirements, expectations, and then the personal management skills needed to successfully engage with online um, learning. Um, it should be noted that the university as part of the EDTL project is is um, will in the coming year be um, working on how better to support um, students to learn an online um, environment and improve their digital literacies. So. The fun thing kind of looked at in meeting these challenges is the need for um, development of the physical infrastructure and um, not only increased um, access to laptop schemes and um, perhaps um, broadband for students in their home environment, but also a kind of reimagining of the university campus and um, to include kind of digitally enhanced classrooms and lecture halls, you know, that allow for the likes of um, group collaboration. Um, but also um, student pace, spaces to engage in with these kind of um, asynchronous material as they're on campus. So um, looking to the future, um, I think our finally our, our kind of discussion kind of turned to, to you know how do we forward the digital agenda. So um, the participants felt that while we've learned much during the pandemic, we're only beginning to kind of beginning our journey, and that essential to this must be a, a collaborative one where we rec we identify the reasons for using technology uh, and not just default with and um, thus um, kind of recognize that what we know about um, digital teaching and learning is probably dwarfed by what we don't know particularly in our uh, institutional context and um, 
and it was felt that as we explore the potential of digital technologies, the student experience and voice must be central to these discussions. So some of the next steps that the, the participants felt needed to um, take place was um, kind of test modules and programs to allow for the development of best practice in course design. And um, there has been some effort towards this within individual schools uh, and future work will, will build upon these efforts. Um, and this in turn was felt that would aid staff in developing their own modules and programs, providing clarity as to why we use technology and the impact that this has on learning and student engagement and satisfaction. Um, the final and perhaps most significant point was made was that academic teaching and support administration staff must be central to these um, developments. And it was kind of noted by um, one table in particular that the World Cafe, uh, you know, allowed for kind of a dehumanization of, of, of this process, uh, you know, and a sense of inclusivity as we move forward. Um, you know, and, and we think this is essential, you know, as without kind of involvement of, of all staff that are involved in teaching, we can't develop, um, you know, we need them to develop not only appropriate policies, but also the enthusiasm needed for the success of these policies. So um, in conclusion, um, this presentation has laid out some of the central challenges and opportunities of digital technology and teaching and learning as seen by those who teach at Maynooth University. While staff are excited by the affordances of digital technologies to enhance engagement, increase fle flexibility and widen participation, there's also a wealth of knowledge as to the barriers to the success. Um, the paper seeks to demonstrate that collegiality can provide an important tool in the university's efforts to overcome these barriers and advance the digital agenda. As was witnessed in the World Cup event, the exchange of ideas across disciplines enhanced the conversation, and this was drawn upon by participants in their proposed solutions. And um, these were not siloed by discipline, but rather sought to use sample modules and other activities from across um, un the university um, departments and indeed other um, uh, people involved in teaching and learning to develop a kind of best a code of best practice to allow all staff to benefit from these experiences. Um, and, and central to all of this is knowledge exchange. Um, Thus, we don't see a World Cup event as kind of a one-off activity, but rather as a key element in driving a bottom-up informed um, pedagogical developments that will increase student success. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, Lovely. Thank you very much, Adrian. A very, very good and engaging uh, com conversation there. I think, you know, you're talking to a lot of points that we were all experiencing in our in our move to, to digital and online uh, learning as part of the pandemic. It's great to hear you talking about the student viewpoints there. Um, I think, yeah, for me, for sure, it's not just about meaningful connectivity in terms of their broadband, but also, as you mentioned, having the space or a physical environment in which to to be able to engage with online uh, teaching especially you know that's why you see a lot of students are really struggling with that cameras off they can't really come off mute because there's too much background noise um i'll open it up to the floor there if anybody has any questions i'm not not seeing anything coming through on the chat but i'll give an opportunity there if anybody wants to raise their hands or um ask a question I might just uh, come in while, while we're waiting on that, Adrian. Do you think it has there been a move to send, to provide central supports at Maynooth to uh, staff who are teaching online? Do you think that that has improved over over time, over the yeah, last think, year or two? Yeah, I think there's there's definitely um, there's definitely supports in place. So there's there's you know specific training on on individual technologies that we can bring into the classroom. There's also that kind of ten credit. Um, um, CPD, which Morag, who's floating around somewhere, runs in, in the participants, and, and um, so I, th I think the support's there. I think what was really noted, and and just just by the conversation, was really interesting to get this kind of really broad kind of um, audience in place from from you know across many disciplines. There's a lot of excitement and a lot of realization of the potential of these technologies, but I, I think the big thing is that how do we work this in in terms of of time in into yeah. what is already a very hectic schedule and not just learning about how to use these technologies you know not just technically but pedagogically but also then redeveloping um existing um class plans to 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 um allow for their accommodation within that and i think that that's the real issue that until that's realized within the workload i think there's going to be difficulties about embedding this because it's kind of been talked about several times this yeah. you know it doesn't reduce the workload at all yeah 
Yeah, no, if anything, it increases the workload. Exactly. I think, as we all know, and and we've heard that time and time again from not just yourselves, but pretty much every uh, people from every institute and every university across the country and abroad. Uh, We're all time poor and digital learning while we are engaging with it and moving, you know, uh, you're really embracing it. It, it, the, there's a huge overhead in terms of the preparation and the administrative burden that it places on staff and something yeah. has to be done about that. I think you're right. I, I think one other thing then toying into that then is obviously a lot of students are ill-prepared to kind of engage with this type of learning, both in terms of technical skills, but also in terms of yeah. management skills. And, and what that does then is it eats into lecturers' times because they're constantly answering yeah. kind of questions about you know so so yeah. it's about that kind of curriculum alignment that we can equip them with these skills so we don't have to constantly be intervening you know, yeah. causing interventions within the yeah. individual students yeah. one one initiative and i'll finish on this at gmit we brought on uh, student mentors dig- online graduate student mentors we actually hired graduates uh, and assign those to students to help with that burden uh, and kind of ease the load on, on lecturers who were overburdened with that. That worked very well for us, but it was very much a knee-jerk reaction. The number was was reduced, you know, in the in for this academic year, and and I think that's that that has been to the detriment of the online experience for the students. Yep. So you, yep. we and really think- need to build that in. Yeah, I think Mara, um, I think Mara slipped out, but she's working on that in the coming year. The, the EDTL project is going to be. Oh, sorry, Mara, you're there. Sorry, maybe you'd yeah. like to say something about that, Mara. Yeah, but yeah. absolutely, it is a key issue. So it is something through the EDTL project at Maynooth that we're looking at is how best to support students in that context, yeah. um, not just in terms of learning and learning, but also developing their, their digital literacies. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, no, it's a hugely important point. It worked very well for us with the graduate student mentors because they were very similar in age. They had recently graduated and they could talk to the students in, in if, you, if you like, in their language. Uh, so we found that very positive. But it's it's something we have to uh, keep an eye on and keep improving. And, and Thank you. Forget that. Yeah. Sorry, no, I was going to say not to forget that we're, you know, we, we need to realize that this is work for students as well. So, you know, yes, we're all complaining about absolutely. how we're overloaded. But, yeah, yeah, yeah they are too. 